Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to simplify a complex rational expression but with negative exponents. So it might seem like it's an extra layer of difficulty on this one. And e this looks very intimidating, but it really isn't. I want you to remember something. Difficult problems are simple problems stacked together. So the trick is to look for the simple problem and try to write it in a different way that might make things easier. So for example, looking at this complex rational expression with negative exponents, if I were to focus just on the x to the negative 1, ask yourself, what does x to the negative 1 mean? Basically it means to take the, uh, the variable and put it in the opposite side of whatever denominator it's in. Now, in, let me just say that slightly differently. x to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x to the first. That's all it means. So if it's in the numerator, put it in the denominator. If there's a negative exponent down here, you put it in the numerator. That's all it means. So let's go ahead and change each one of these according to the negative exponent. So it's 1 over x to the first plus 1 over y to the first over 1 over x cubed plus 1 over y cubed. Now, I'm not so sure whether that makes it look a little bit easier or not, but it certainly gets rid of negative exponents, which tend to kind of confuse people. Now, if you remember how to do complex rational expressions, one of your, one of your goals is to have the same denominator for each one of the four smaller rational expressions. So if I were to look at this, I would say, well, the common or the lowest common denominator for all four of these smaller rational expressions would be x cubed y cubed x cubed y cubed so what I want to do then my goal is to make each one of these have that same denominator I'm gonna multiply this top one by x squared y cubed over x squared y cubed I'm just multiplying by one but now I have when I multiply this across an x cubed and a y cubed I'm going to do the same thing here, but with a slightly different 1. I'm going to multiply it by x cubed y squared. x cubed y squared. Again, I'm multiplying by 1. Remember, that doesn't change the quantity here. It just changes the way it looks. Down here, it's a little simpler. I just need to multiply by y cubed over y cubed. And here, I need to multiply by x cubed over x cubed. Now if you were to look at each one of these smaller denominators, they would all have the same denominator. x cubed, y cubed, x cubed, y cubed, x cubed, y cubed, x cubed, y cubed. And remember from my last video, the trick here is that you can actually now cross out each of these denominators. Whoops, I went a little too high there. And let me just rewrite the numerators that are left over. I've got an x squared y cubed plus x cubed y squared over y cubed plus x cubed. Wow. OK, so what do we do with this one? Well, this is a binomial. So you ask yourself, how do I factor a binomial? Well, first you all should take out the most common factors. So in this case, it's going to be x squared, y squared. So let's take out x squared, y squared. That leaves me with y plus x. Let's look at this binomial. You might recognize that as a sum of cubes. Now, let me just put this up here, too, just to keep things common factors. Remember that a sum of cubes, you s factor that by doing a binomial with an addition, because you always start with what it, whatever's in there, excuse me, right here, plus a trinomial. And you go minus plus there. 
What you need to do then to factor this would be to say, okay, I need to take the cube root of that, and that goes there, and that goes, the rest of it goes there. The cube root of that goes there, the x squared part goes here, and then you take one of each there. Now you can see that the resulting expression is all factored, and I see that I can actually factor out a 1 here and here. Let's go ahead and rewrite now finally what I have left over. x squared, y squared, all over y squared minus xy plus x squared. And that is your final answer, your final simplified expression. I hope that helped. Just go through the video one more time. Remember that negative exponents are basically saying put me in the opposite side of the fraction. And then from there just multiply by 1. And then factor like you know how to do binomials. And there's your final expression. Good luck.